Good morning, and welcome to The Daily Race. Uh, we're continuing our walk through uh, the book of Titus, Paul's letter to Titus, instructions for, for leading this um, this church. And by church, I mean a, a, uh, not just one local church, but a, a gathering of believers in on the island of Crete. There's many different pockets of believers, many different local gatherings, meeting in homes, meeting in synagogues, uh, worshiping together, doing life together. Um, and he's there to bring some order to it. They had planted these churches before. Now it's time to, to go back and make sure that they're established and ready for the future. So bringing up the right leaders and um, also protecting uh, these these new believers from false teaching. So in this passage here, we're going to uh, talk about Paul. Paul's instructing uh, Titus to, to promote right teaching. And as he does this, uh, it's for everyone. The, the Titus is supposed to spend some time pouring into every single group into the church. Now let's read what it says here. It says, as for you, Titus, promote the kind, of te- the kind of living that reflects wholesome teaching. So what does he say there? He says, actions and words. Uh, promote the kind of living that reflects wholesome teaching. That this isn't just, hey, you're going to go there and you're going to make sure they understand all of these doctrines. You're going to make sure that they really understand the, the, the Trinity and make sure that they can define and, and pass the test on sanctification and justification and uh, under, have their Christology all narrowed down and, and you know just be able to recite that and understand the philosophical. No. Promote the right kind, promote the kind of living that reflects wholesome teaching. It's about application. It's about living it out. <laughs> Jesus in his great commission, he says, he says, go and, and teach them to do everything I have commanded you. That's what Jesus told his disciples. Hey, as you go out and spread this good news message, make sure you teach them to do everything. Not teach them to know all the philosophies of Christianity. No, teach them to do. Now, is there a foundation we need to know in order to be able to do? Absolutely. Of course. But don't stop at knowledge. It has to move towards application and living out our faith. So, teach the older men to exercise self-control and be worthy of respect and to live wisely. He's like, hey, but we have a culture where we respect our, our elders. That's a great thing, but make sure they live up to the respect that they're receiving. And tell these men to, to live in a way, exercise self-control, that they are worthy of the respect that they are receiving, that they're being respected for the right things, not just because of uh, their age, but because of the way that they're living their lives and following Jesus. They must have sound faith and be filled with love and patience. Similarly, teach the older women to live in a way that honors God. Now, they must not slander others or be heavy drinkers. Instead, they should teach, uh, they should teach others what is good. So he's talking to the, to the women there and, and letting them know, hey, you've got some, some, some women here who are, are known uh, for their, their, their nurturing ability, known for you know, bringing up this next generation. Make sure that you employ them to be teaching as well, to be pouring into the next generation with their lifestyle, uh, with with what they're doing and with their words. These older women must train younger women to love their husbands and their children. You know, that's something that, that only they can, you know, Timothy, you're not going to be able to teach uh, women how to, to have a, a healthy marriage with their husband. But hey, employ these older women to do that. Um, it, it then goes on and says, in, in the same way, encourage the young men to live wisely. And you yourself must be an example to them by doing good works of every kind. Let everything you do reflect the integrity and seriousness of your teaching. Teach the truth so that your teaching won't be criticized. Then those who oppose us will be ashamed and have nothing bad to say about us. So then he's telling Timothy about his approach. First, live it out. (laughs) Whatever you're teaching, you have to be living this out in your life. If there is hypocrisy, if there is your words preaching one thing and you are acting on another thing, Titus, this is this is not going to work. <laughs> they're, they're not going to listen to you. You have to first be a doer of the word before you become a teacher of the word, and then and then stick to the truth. Just just teach the basics. Uh, why does he say that? You must. Uh, uh, sorry, it says um, teach the truth so that your teaching can't be criticized. Teach the truth so that your teaching can't be criticized. So if, if you stick to the basics, if you stick to the scripture, if you stick to the, uh, the death, resurrection of, of Jesus, if you stick to those grace by uh, faith by grace alone, a relationship with God, you can't be criticized that. 
once you start going off and speculating, once you start getting into the obscure things and bringing your own personal philosophies and your own bets, that that's where the criticism comes. That's where the debate can come. Stick to the truth. We don't need you pontificating about what you think this might. And no, stick to the word, Timothy. Stick to the scripture. Stick to the basic things. There's plenty of material to cover there. You can spend your whole wife, life helping people do the things that Jesus has said to do. Uh, stick to the truth. So live it out and use words to describe it. Be an example of what Jesus calls us to do and, and encourage the people to put it into practice. Young and old, male and female, everyone. And then it wraps up with one last group. And this is, this is one of those passages of scripture that is it's difficult to deal with. Let me just read it here. Slaves must always obey their masters and do their best to please them. They must not talk back or steal, but must show themselves to be entirely trustworthy and good. Then they will make the teaching about God, about God, our Savior, attractive in every way. Ah, like this, we read this in our context here 2,000 years later. Think, man, Paul, why didn't you just tell him, like, fight against slavery? Let these people free. It's wrong to, to own another human being. Like, why, why aren't you fighting this, this moral fight against slavery here? And that's, that's a question. We won't know why they didn't pick up this cause at this point. But what he's saying is that in this contest, slavery exists. Like, we know through history that, that eventually the church is going to get to this. And they're going to respond to this. The end of the slavery comes because of Christians, but, but it doesn't at this point. And, and honestly, a passage like this is taken out of context and was used to justify slavery for, for many, many years. That, hey, you know, the Bible talks uh, about slavery, about how people, you know, should behave as slaves. <laughs> and that's not really the, the context of this passage, though. The context is the fact that there are slaves that have become followers of, <laughs> that have become followers of Jesus. So as a follower of Jesus, whose life situation is in slavery, how do you follow him? that you, you live it out, you're obedient to your master, you do your best to please them, you don't talk back or steal, and you show yourself to be entirely trustworthy good. You, you, you live the life of Jesus even in that difficult, horrible situation. And, and that shines a light and points to God. It shows that this really is true. If someone who has nothing of their own, uh, no freedom, no possessions, is giving their life to Jesus and, and is glad about it, happy about it. What does that say about the, the power of Jesus? Once again, this is one of those passages where you're like, man, why didn't they deal with this earlier? But they didn't. They didn't step into this. Now, as we look at all of Paul's readings, we, we see that, that Paul lifts up these, these people, the people in slavery. He talks about how God does not see a difference between slave and free. He challenges people who own slaves, to, to treat them well as they would a brother in Christ. Like, he speaks highly of, of, of slaves than anyone else. Like, the way that they talk about slavery is radical in this situation. It doesn't seem radical to us because uh, of where we're at at this point in history, but it was radical back then, and it led to where we're at here today. But in this snapshot, it's, it's a difficult thing to deal with, and, and sometimes it's easy just to kind of skip over it. It's like, ah, let's just move on to the next passage. But even though this passage is about promoting right teaching and living it out, I didn't want to skip that verse here and just pretend like it's not there. It's there. It does not, what I want to be clear is, does not mean the Bible is promoting slavery. It's saying in this context, slavery exists. It's an institution. It is part of, of the, the water that we swim in here in this Roman Empire. And we, I'm reading into it just because I know some of Paul's other writing in Philemon Hey, we wish it didn't exist. We wish it didn't, but it does. So how do we operate within this, especially for those who are in slavery that, that are following Jesus? How do you live in this circumstance? How do you put it into practice? Not just a head knowledge, but an application knowledge. So a great passage here to Timothy about, hey, teach them to do, but also live it out yourselves. Now that, that applies to everything. We, we're constantly pointing people towards correct action. Maybe it's, it's our children. And it's in a workplace. And just to have that moral integrity to teach, you have to live it out. So that's the step today. Just a little bit of analysis today, a little bit of, of thought. Hey, as I'm going in today, am I practicing what I'm preaching? Am I living out what I'm saying? Am I, 
Am I pointing to Jesus and telling him he's the hope of everything and then I'm just angry all day at, at work and I'm complaining about everything that's going on? That's pro- There's a miss there, right? How do we take a next right step so that our actions match our words? That's the challenge for today. And that was the challenge that, that Paul was giving Titus in this part of the passage. Tomorrow we're going to continue to pick it up a little bit more as he continues to instruct them. Hey, if you're following along on the daily race, I would encourage you to subscribe. Uh, like the page if you're on Facebook or Instagram, YouTube. Uh, that helps us be able to, to extend the reach of, of the, the daily race as more people subscribe in that way. Appreciate you, you watching every day, and so many of you guys have already done that. Uh, but if, if you haven't done that already, man, that's a huge help to uh, the daily race and being able to make it available and viewable to, to more and more people. So if God's blessed you through this, that would be a simple way to help spread that message. All right, let's go ahead and start our day with the word of prayer. God, we, we love you and we thank you. We, we thank you that you have given us practical things to put into place, God, that you have, through the gospel accounts, uh, have recorded all of the, the things that, that you, Jesus, when you came down to earth, told us that you want us to do, uh, the way that you want us to, to think uh, about, about this life, the attitudes we need to have, the, the purpose we need to have. Uh, the way to, to navigate through relationships and and uh, and our obligations. And, and Jesus, we just want to become more and more like you. Help us not to get caught up in, in the, the things that can distract us. Good things, weird things, bad things. God, just help us to keep focused on you. And, and we know that as we start our day with you today, that's that's the beginning of it. So as we take our first step with you to here today, God, we pray that you would guide and direct our next step, and the step after that, and the step after that. We want to stay close to you today, following you each and every opportunity we get. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. All right, well, hey, I hope you have a great, great rest of the day. Look forward to seeing you 24 hours from now right back here on The Daily Race. Love you guys.